Hey there, welcome to another episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host, Monday, and this video is part of my review series, and today we're going to be talking about strange and good controllers and bad controllers. One of the most important features of a video game system is the controller. It dictates how the player is going to interact with the game, whether or not they can do particular moves or have certain combinations or things like that, um, whether or not uh, the system is capable of particular games, and how, how it's going to meet the challenges of trying to play uh, certain games that were not even designed for that controller. So uh, this is just me going over some of the uh, really strange uh, controllers, some of them good, some of them bad, that I actually have in my collection. Uh, and You know, there's no top 10, there's no particular order, it was just as I remembered things, you know, this is how it went. So uh, the first up we have is the Samba de Amigo controller for the Sega Dreamcast. Um, I bought this when it first came out. Actually, I pre-ordered it and uh, picked it up on the first day and rolled the mat out and put the sensor down and plugged the controllers in, the maracas, and me and my friends, we had a blast laughing at ourselves, laughing at each other, but still the game did a really good job of of just showing how everything worked just right. Now, I believe that the sensors that they used were just, you know, the the basic, you know, shake sensor where it's a spring around a pole and as you shake it the spring connects to the pole and completes the circuit. And uh the other thing is the uh I believe it's like a sonic sensor uh or sound-based sensor with uh, a microphone and a speaker set up that's you know above human range of hearing and stuff to to gauge the distance between you know the f the floor sensor and the maraca itself. Um, these things were actually pretty well done, although it was a little bit challenging to find a space to be able to play uh, this game and be able to uh, you know stand and like still see the TV and do the poses and stuff like that but still just a really great controller and you know I still have it and I still play it, break it out and play it every once in a while. Uh, next we have uh, again in the percussion uh, area is the Donkey Konga bongos. Uh, this These bongos were used in I think three of the Donkey Kong games. Uh, two of them were specifically bongos, music style games, and then there was an adventure game where you played as Donkey Kong and you controlled him with the bongos. And um, it's pretty entertaining. It's not the best control scheme, but you know, once you get used to it, uh, just like Metal Jesus Rock says, you know, it's it's pretty entertaining. And uh, I would suggest anyone who has these laying around just to go back and, and try to play that way. Um, next we have something for the lazy gamers which is the PlayStation RPG controller. Uh, I believe it's by ASCII uh, or ASCIiWare or someone like that. Uh, and it is an RPG controller where they have squashed all of the PlayStation controller down to a single hand controller and it almost looks like a like a presentation style controller where you can just kind of like click the next button a couple of times during like a PowerPoint presentation but I think that they they kind of they've kind of hit it out of the park with this one as well um, the buttons are in the correct area for very specific games like uh, Final Fantasy 7 Final Fantasy 8 uh, and it's it's actually pretty well done, um, you know. But honestly, uh, you know, I, I bought it for nostalgia purposes, and um, I, I still stick with just the, the uh, regular style controller. Uh, this 
the RPG controller does not have any rumble features and it does not have any analog features as well. Um, speaking of features, we'll go to the controller that has probably the most features. Uh, Steel Battalion was released on the Xbox by Capcom and the controller that, that came with it was massive. Uh, between metallic flip switches, uh, light up switches, uh, you know, rotary knobs for changing the channel on, on, on a, your radio, uh, you know, in, in the two analog, uh, you know, sticks. And I mean, this thing is massive. It is a huge controller, but you use all of it when you're playing the game, which is great. It's very immersive. It was, it was not a controller designed for the faint of heart. It was, it was meant to help pull you into the game, and that's what it does. It feels awesome playing the game with this controller. And um, there have even been people that have been modifying this controller uh, to make it compatible with PC games as well. And you know. It's it's just great. It's a lot of fun. Um, however, with the prices that the thing are, are fetching right now, I can't suggest going out buying one unless you really, really want to play Steel Battalion on the original Xbox. If you want to do that, go for it. I'm not going to lie, though. It's a huge purchase. Um, Speaking of large, oversized controllers, uh, the Sony Analog Joystick was this huge twin-stick flight-style controller, and it's really good. I enjoy having one. Uh, I specifically bought it to play Assault on the Nameco Museums. I believe it's Nameco Museum 4, and uh, it works perfectly with it. It's awesome. I, absolutely love playing that game and having the Sony analog joystick makes it all the much better to play this game. Now I'm going to move on to some of the uh, really bad weird controllers that I've seen. Um, the Wiimote is actually a weird controller that is not great. Uh, the Wiimote Plus is good and it has you know a little bit more fine-tuning but uh, the main thing is basically trying to use the Wiimote as a light gun. Um, you know the reference point is not on the screen itself so it's going to be a little bit off and there's no real way to you know counter that with any kind of calibration or anything like that but you know it's just a weird controller and it's not as good as it could be. Uh, the PlayStation Move, yet another, you know, motion control, not that great. You know, I, I tried using it in in one of the Kill Zone games that they had out, and it's just it's just not that good. <laughs> you know, I enjoy having it, I enjoy playing with it. You know, it's it's kind of a novelty thing for me, but it's just not as good as playing with a regular controller in that game. Uh, Next up is the Kinect, and when I say Kinect, I mean I have the Kinect for the Xbox One, and I have the Kinect for the Xbox 360, and they just don't track things as well as they should. Um, I know that they try to use infrared light and stuff like that to, you know, measure and, and single out the player and stuff like that, and and they do a great job of doing, you know, capturing the player and stuff like that. But so many of the games just don't use it very well, or or just have you know poor controls when it comes to it. Um, specifically, uh, the Steel Battalion for the Xbox 360 is awful, <laughs> but it's almost awful in a comedic sense. Um, but you know, it's you know it's just out there. Uh, these are again, these are just strange controllers. I know that there's all kinds of other controllers out there um, like the power glove that I missed and stuff like that but you know just guys let me know what you think of like some of these strange controllers if there's a strange controller out there that 
you know, you've run into uh, that, that I didn't mention or anything like that, you know, put it in the comments below. You know, it's, it's, there's tons and tons of peripherals out there, lots of controllers, um, you know, that are just a huge number of things out there. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.